There's a lot of formal strength to the work, references to art historical and cultural traditions in China and the West, but fundamentally there's so much humanity in the work. So for my opening exhibition, I knew that I wanted to work with Ai Weiwei. I'm Jeffrey Deitch, welcoming you to the inaugural exhibition at our gallery. I wanted brilliant architecture, but not too much architecture. We were very fortunate that Frank Gehry, as he puts it, volunteered to take on the design of the renovation. He understood exactly what he wanted to do. Frank's design is very, very simple and straightforward. It is essentially a box within a box. He loved the existing trusses and suggested, well, paint them gray, sandblast the ceiling to lighten it to the original color. Lighting is so important in an art space. Beautiful California sunshine. You don't even need to turn on the electric lights. People feel that the space has a beautiful quality, but you don't really notice the architecture first. Ai Weiwei is arguably maybe the best known contemporary artist in the world today. I've known Ai Weiwei since about 2007. I got very inspired by his work when I heard about the project he did for Documenta. He had never had a major exhibition in Los Angeles. When I presented the project to him, he totally embraced it. People in Los Angeles were enthusiastic, so we ended up having this wonderful trifecta with the Marciano Foundation and UTA space. So the idea that he can have three shows, show three aspects of the work, make a big impact, in particular communicate beyond the inside art world, that's very important for him and also very important for me. I wanted to open with an exhibition that wasn't just for the insiders. The art is for everyone. Weiwei's father was the most famous poet in China. He was a victim of the Cultural Revolution and with 300,000 other intellectuals, poets, artists, musicians, sent to the countryside for re-education. He must have gotten such a deep education from his father being together in this internal exile. They didn't really have a sense that of the future. A lot of his childhood was spent in a remote area of the Gobi Desert. That's where Weiwei grew up, in this bleak landscape. People look at this and say, wow, this is like a landscape. And yes, it does evoke a landscape. Weiwei is very concerned about the loss of traditional culture. He's very moved, as I am, by the history of each of these works, each of these stools. The design was developed 500 years ago during the Ming Dynasty. And Weiwei loves that it is a perfect form. Only three legs, they're built without any nails. These stools were a staple in the home of every peasant family in China. This could have been passed down in one family from generation to generation from the 1500s to today families who live in the countryside, moving to the cities, they're leaving behind the old furniture, selling it in markets, moving to the city where they buy cheap plastic chairs. There are 6,000 of these stools. These stools were bought in markets from all over northern China. They're like people, where essentially everyone is similar, but Everyone has variations. A sea of people. Lego is something everybody can buy, everybody can use. The same way that Warhol used the silkscreen, he's using these Lego bricks to create imagery, which are made up of thousands of individual Lego bricks. They are based on this sculptural fountain created by an Italian 
commissioned by the Chinese emperor. The famous zodiac fountain. The works were broken up, brought back to Europe as spoils of war. Famously, there were two in the Yves Saint Laurent auction. They were bought for a very high price by someone bidding on the phone from China, who then, when the auction was over, announced, I wasn't really bidding. I was just making a point that these belong to the Chinese people and must be returned. So Weiwei is very, very interested in this complex history in terms of relations between China and the West. The work is neither just Chinese or American. It is this fascinating hybrid that he's created. I'm particularly fascinated by the ton of tea. This is one of the great works of Weiwei. This ton of tea is compressed from a virtual room full of tea. It's still fragrant if you get close to it. It has this remarkable power of using tea as this medium. Tea has so much to do with Chinese culture, English culture, all the complex history between China and the West is something that's a big part of Weiwei's subject matter. Weiwei loves traditional Chinese carpentry, traditional Chinese marquetry. This is inspired by the treasure boxes that the Chinese emperors had built. It's where the Chinese emperors would keep their treasures of jade and jewels. This is more conceptual. This treasure box takes months and months to build. There's so much in this work. Grapes is a great favorite of mine. I love this piece. This large sculpture is balanced only on the three legs of the bottom stool. So there's a magic to how these are all put together in this form. Weiwei is a natural, intuitive engineer. It starts when Weiwei is watching his cat playing with a cheap plastic toy. It's a small plastic version of that classic divine proportion open sphere. It comes from a drawing by Leonardo da Vinci, the divine proportion. It goes from a plastic cat toy to maybe the greatest artist in the Western tradition, crafted in the traditional way, no nails, and done with beautiful, rare Chinese wood. Each of the different openings are different sizes. You can look at them for hours and hours and hours and not get tired because the form is so interesting. Everything here in Weiwei's work has these complexities. They're formally strong, but there's much more to them. The stools, for instance, part of it is about this displacement of masses of people leaving the countryside and going to the cities. Weiwei himself understood what it meant to be a refugee, being sent to the countryside during the Cultural Revolution, being a young Chinese in New York City, the refugee crisis is one of the biggest crises facing the world today. Oh, he's confronting something that's existential. Art and life come together. It's all part of the art. It's all connected.